was intrigued by the, the question of do we think spirituality uh, sure. is helpful yes. uh, or even necessary? And um, yeah, again, it's one of those questions that uh, makes a set of assumptions about what we believe spirituality actually is. First of all, I get, you know, it'd be helpful to know like, what, we, what we actually mean yeah. when we say that. Um, but we're also, uh, we, are, we are people who have been trained to believe that we are um, uh, creatures that are uh, divided in different compartments. So I have my physical self, I have my, my, my spiritual self, my this self, whatever. Do I need to have this spiritual self? It's kind of like, it's an accessory that perhaps I can choose to have or not. Uh, but I would encourage us to, 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 first of all, just to consider that that question, is spirituality necessary, that that question would have made little to no sense at all to a first century ancient uh, Middle Easterner. Uh, first century Middle Easterner uh, would have uh, looked at us who asked this question and would have assumed that we have no idea what we're talking about. That we don't perceive the world to be the way the world really is. The first century Middle Easterner would have assumed that uh, to talk about spirituality, God, what have you, would be to talk about the oxygen in the room. Talking about, well, do you need oxygen? Is it an accessory? No, of course not. Like we're talking about gravity. Like these are just natural things that are part of what it means for us to be human. But we have been trained in our culture over the last 500 years to compartmentalize this, even to the point where we no longer we, we it's an option that we can have, as opposed to oxygen or gravity, which is not an option that we can navigate in or around. So I would say, as a as a person, you know, I, as we said earlier, that everybody in the room, whether you're aware of it or not, has already made a decision. You're choosing every day, every moment. You're making a decision about what the nature of the world is in which you believe you're living. And those of us who follow Jesus would say, well, we believe in a world that has been made and that we are creatures. I'm not a creator, I'm a creature. But I've been made as a creature in a certain way. And I've been made to know joy. I've been made to be vulnerable in order to create goodness and beauty in the world. And that when trauma comes, the healing of trauma is not going to be something that I either take care of on my own, but will be necessarily in need of someone else to come for me to help me do this, if that makes sense. And as it turns out, this is just a recapitulation of parenting a newborn and an infant and a toddler. Like the toddler needs the parent to come for her when she's in a mess because what she needs is a nap. She's not going to go for a nap by herself. She needs someone to come for her. And in this way, we would say, uh, when it comes then to things like gratitude, when it comes, like one of the things that we're doing, when we, when we practice gratitude, what we are doing is we are engaging the focus of our attention in a particular way. One of the primary things that the mind does, we like to say that attention is the ignition key of the mind. It turns everything on. Everything that we do, that we do, is a function of what we are turning our attention to. And the question is, like, how well are you paying attention to what you're paying attention to? Most of us, not very aware of what we're paying attention to. Most of us are on autopilot. We think that we are making decisions mostly consciously and intentionally. We are not. Most of what we're doing is on autopilot. And because of that, we also find ourselves in a world suddenly with our anxiety and our depression or this and our that, unaware of what I've been paying attention to. But the moment someone says, like, begin to pay attention to these things in the world. We, like, if we were to say, uh, uh, if I were to ask you the question, uh, how many yellow cars have you seen in the last week? Uh, unless you own a yellow car, most of you would be taking guesses. Would, I be, would that be fair to say? How many yellow cars? If I were to say, for the next week, or the next month, for the next week, I want you to pay attention to how many yellow cars you're keeping track of. Not only next week would you come back and give me, because you're Vandy students, you would tell me exactly the number of cars that are yellow that you've seen. You would be seeing yellow cars for a month. And you would be seeing them because for a period of time you practiced paying attention to it. When I practice paying attention to things for which I am grateful because they are bringing things into my life that are good, it changes the nature of what my own internal state of affairs is because I'm choosing to pay attention to something. But the reality is that the human condition is such that even when I do that, 
it does not keep my suffering ultimately at bay. The cancer may still come. The Parkinson's will still come. And then the question will be, who will come for me? Not just will I be able to pay attention to something. Not just will I be able to do a set of tasks that you've given me to do for better mental health. The question will continually be, who will be in my life who will come for me when I can no longer come for myself? Because we are vulnerable creatures that long to be seen, soothed, safe, and secure, and that will be the way it will be until we're dead. And that's actually really good news because then it gets us to the point where we can say, who are gonna be the people in the next one to four years here at Vanderbilt, who are gonna be the people with whom I'm gonna create community? who will be the people who will go with me to my grave? Who are gonna be the people who when I give Kurt their names, there will be nothing about me that they don't know? I'm gonna be so deeply known and loved that I won't have to worry about benchmarks. I won't have to worry about getting a D on an exam because this is the work that we are doing. The hard part for us, we would say as Christians, ultimately, we humans fail on all of these counts which is why we think we need someone to rescue us in this. And this is the place where Jesus you know, does his thing.